YouTube, what's going on? It's Juan Gotti here with yet another Washington football team video. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the game that's coming up between the Washington football team and the Dallas Cowboys. It's Dallas week, y'all. I know it don't feel like it, but it is. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. But before we do, make sure you guys go down below, leave a like on this video, subscribe if you're new, and turn on post notifications so you get notified when I upload a video about the NFL. In this case, I'll watch the football team. Roll that intro, baby. We are Washington. Let's get it. <laughs> we Washington. We Washington. We Washington. We Washington, man. We Washington. So, like I said, it is Dallas week. I know it don't feel like it, y'all. I know it don't from the name, from us not being the Redskins anymore, from just how this season is planned out. But it's still Dallas week, and it's still Washington versus Dallas. I don't care if we're called the Washington Red Hole, whatever. I don't care what the name is. It's still Washington versus Dallas. And for me, it's still Redskins versus Dallas. You can't take that away from me. And this is the best rivalry in all of national sports or all of major sports, I should say, in my opinion. Yeah, this the history of it. I I don't think no other uh, rivalry touched this. Maybe the Yankees and Red Sox, but other than that, I don't see no other rivalry touching that. But that's just my opinion. Now we're here to preview the game like we do every week, but this one is just any just more special than anything. Not only is it in the mix of the pandemic, not only is it Washington versus the Cowboys, not only are both teams bad and banged up, but this is a big game. I knew I know it don't seem like it. But it, this is a huge game, and I knew last week I said it was a big game, which in Quinn, it was. It was. It was actually a big game, and I know we came up on the short end of the stick, but Sunday's game is a huge game because if we lose, we're basically dead. Honestly, I feel like this is the season right here. If we lose this game, although we're not mathematically out of it, but I, I just feel like we're, we're out of it, and it's time to look towards the draft if we lose because – now we're going to be 1-2 and two in the division, and then we're going to be 1-6 and six overall. And then I just feel like Dallas, although with all the injuries, I feel like Dallas and Philly are the ones that's going to run away with this division. Philly can't have a comeback win yesterday. They scored two touchdowns in a matter of five minutes. So Philly, they are, they're are they not they're not good. Let's be real. They're not good, but someone has to win this division. And Dallas and Philly are the two talent, most talented teams, even with, even with their injuries. So I feel like one of those teams are going to run away with this uh division at some point but if we win we can keep our hopes alive for our playoff chance so this game is huge and basically we we have to win honestly it's it's win or nothing honestly because if, if dallas win they're three and four and now there's going to be two up they're going to be two games up on the on one of us so other than philadelphia obviously because they won and like i said i just feel like that's what the division is going to go uh down to but let's move on so Let's preview this game. How are we going to beat the Dallas Cowboys? Now, quite frankly, let me just be honest. Before I even get into this, if they had Dak Prescott, prayers up to Dak Prescott. Such a good player. And uh, quite frankly, if he wasn't on the Cowboys, I'll be rooting for him. And if they don't sign him this offseason, I'll be the first in line to hit his phone to sign him because I love Dak Prescott, man, as a player. And quite frankly, he's a Dallas Cowboys, so I can't root for him. But um, that has nothing to do with it. His injury that he sustained is just crazy, man, especially on the contract year. So I hope he gets back. And if Dallas doesn't sign him, I will hit his phone. But I got off a little topic here. If they had Dak Prescott, we would get blown out. We will get blown out. I don't care how bad you can say their defense is because their defense is atrocious, probably the worst in all the football. If not, they're at the bottom tier. And if they had Dak Prescott, they would have blown us up by 40. Because although their defense doesn't, you know, help them by much, their offense is capable for 40 points a game. I know the Cardinals kind of, you know, put a stump in there, but that's because they didn't have Dak Prescott. You know what I'm saying? Now, the Dallas Cowboys fans see how important Dak Prescott is to this team. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people was gonna, a lot of people like to say Ezekiel Elliott is that centerpiece of that team, which is not true, man. At, at a point in time, I thought that too. But after that 2016 season, I seen that Dak Prescott is the vocal point of this team, not only because he's a quarterback, but he's just the perfect player for that that team honest in my opinion and I feel like without Dak Prescott the team is just flat the defense is horrible like we said before they're capable of giving up 40 points a game do I think we're going to put 40 points on them 30 points no I do not our offense is not that good enough but it is a chance because this defense is horrible you know this week they had players coming out saying that it's the coach's fault just a lot of turmoil in that locker room 
for our sake, I hope it continues. I hope Mike McCarthy keeps them unprepared because I just want to win. You know what I'm saying? I'll take any winning I can get. And hopefully we come out on top with the victory. Now, how do we stop the Dallas Cowboys? Quite frankly, just get after Andy Dalton. And I'm done saying predicting how many sacks we're going to have because it seems like every time I predict, we don't live up to it because Jack Del Rio isn't aggressive. I hope he gets aggressive like he did week one this week because we're playing against Andy Dalton. I'm not saying he's not a good quarterback, but he's not Dak Prescott. You know what I'm saying? Make him kill you with an arm, which he, his arm gets him in trouble a lot, as you've seen in that game. Yeah, I know a lot of people can argue that that was a pass interference, but still, you should never throw that ball. You know what I'm saying? His arm gets him in a lot of trouble. So get pressure on Andy Dalton, man. Make him win the game with his arm. And if he if he beats you with his arm, hey, hats off to him. But he's not that good to where you should fear him and not bring pressure, man. I, I just I just don't know what's up with Jack Dario and his play calling, man. Bring some pressure. We should have five, maybe six on every play. If not every play, every other play. Just get him rattled. Don't let him get set. Because like I said, although I just said it about Andy Dalton, any quarterback, if you let the, if you sit back and only rushing three, maybe four, any quarterback can pick you apart, man. Especially with your secondary is how our secondary is outside of Kendall Fuller, maybe Ronald Darby, it's horrible. So, yeah, just send some pressure on to Andy Dalton and, and make him get rattled. Next thing on my list is contain Demarcus Lawrence. Yeah, I know Demarcus Lawrence hasn't been off to the best start of his season or yeah, the season of twenty twenty. But he is still DeMarcus Lawrence at the end of the day. You know, one of the best pass rushers in the league. You know, I know he hasn't lived up to it this year, but it's a reason why he got paid. That's that's essentially what I'm trying to say here. And he's not he has, he's been off to a shaky start. But what is the perfect game to get to get off to a good start against the Washington football team? Our offensive line is detrimental. A good thing he's going to be coming off Morgan Moses' side. Unless they do move him to the other side, that's Jerron Christian. I'm a little scared. But if he's coming off Morgan Moses' side, I'm a little, I am feel a little bit better about that matchup. Now we have Brandon Sherr back. So if we need to double team him, we can make the other pass rushers beat us like Alden Smith. Um, and then, you know, you got to account for Lane Van Der Esch on some, on some linebacker screens. So their defense is not that bad, but as far as, like, the, the talent goes, but the stats, they are pretty bad. So, like I said, Demarcus Lawrence is capable of going off. And I know he had a, a shaky start to a season, but he can have, he can go off. And would I be surprised if he goes off against the Washington football team? No, I do not. So contain Demarcus Lawrence, chip him, you know, double team, do whatever you got to do to take him out of the game. You know what I'm saying? I feel better by letting Alden Smith, which I hope it doesn't happen, but I feel better with letting Alden Smith beat us than Demarcus Lawrence because it's just like we expected this. You know what I'm saying? So other thing I can say on the list is take advantage of this weak secondary. This secondary is horrible, man. Their best corner is Trayvon Digg. I, I just feel like I don't like predicting anymore because every time I predict, they don't live up to it. But I'm going to just say this. I feel like Terry McLaurin's going to have at least two touchdowns this game if we get him the ball, Um, if we take some shots. We got to take some shots this game. And their best corner is Trayvon Diggs. Yeah, you could say a Wujie, but a Wujie is not that good in my opinion. He was solid when Byron Jones was here, but when he's asked to be the legitimate number one, which I don't even think he is because I see um, Trayvon Diggs guarding the best receivers. But even if he is an number one quarterback on the, on the roster, he is not living up to it. He was a solid number two, but not a good number one. So I feel like Terry McLaurin can have a big day. You know what I'm saying? I feel like Dontrell Emmett can have a solid day. Logan Thomas at the tight end can have a solid day. I know he was a little banged up, but he's, he should be good to go. Cam Sims is going to be having a bigger role today. Beach Report actually predicted Cam Sims to have the uh, a breakout um, year in the second half of the season. So Cam Sims could be, you know, having a big day. You know what I'm saying? Just expose this secondary. This secondary does not scare me at all. You know what I'm saying? This is a reason why they're giving up 30 points, 40 points per game. So just take advantage of that weak secondary. Don't let that pass rush get to you. Their pass rush isn't that scary, in my opinion, outside of Tank Lawrence. But, you know, it can happen because it's the Washington football team. So next thing on the list Take some shots, please. I'm tired of this predictable high school offense, Scott Turner. I'm tired of slants, screens, drags, this mesh concept that you continue to run that that we ran like 90 times and, and happily or finally Terry McLaurin was open, although he didn't get the ball. Terry McLaurin was open on the play for like, probably like the first time of the season. He, he just keeps running this mesh concept that I don't understand why because it's never open. It's just a bunch of receivers all in the same area. You know what I'm saying? Trying to create some space for Terry McLaurin. 
and just open up the playbook. You know what I'm saying? That was a big reason why you wanted to bench Dwayne anyway because you didn't he didn't know the playbook. Now that you have your guy in there that you feel more comfortable with, open the playbook. Take some shots downfield, please. You know what I'm saying? I, I beg you. No one can can, no one in the secondary can check Terry McLaurin is essentially what I'm trying to say. So why not use him? Use Terry McLaurin in the slot. Make him, you know, have mismatches against linebackers and, and safeties. You know what I'm saying? Their safety play is horrible. Their cornerback play is horrible. So just take advantage of the secondary. And what is the best way to do? Take shots down the field. Expose them across the middle. You know what I'm saying? Their linebackers can't cover. Maybe Jalen Ramsey or, excuse me, Jalen Smith rather than not Jalen Ramsey. Maybe Lane Van Der Esch, But still, they're not going to be that good enough to stop Logan Thomas or even, you know, um, Cam Sims across the middle. So just take some shots. Next thing on my list is to contain their offensive firepower starting with Ezekiel Elliott now be frank me me honestly our run defense did get better I'm not gonna lie it got better but Ezekiel Elliott is always good for a hundred and hundred and twenty and a touchdown against us so I'm not even gonna be mad we have to contain Ezekiel Elliott but it's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? It always happens. We always let the best running backs get us. And I'm not going to be surprised if Ezekiel Elliott. Now, one thing I will say about Ezekiel Elliott is punch that ball out. You know, go after that ball. He had two fumbles on Monday Night Football. And I'm pretty sure he's going to be holding that ball extra secure um, Sunday. But, you know, he might slip up one good time. So make sure you go after that ball. Um, Landon Collins, the, the the backers, John Bostic, everyone, just go after that ball anytime Zeke touch it because you know he's going to cough it up. But I do expect him to hold it um, more tight this game, but I would not be surprised if he do cough it up not once but twice this game. Other than that, I think I covered everything. Special teams, we got to get off to a good start. Scott Turner, you know, you got to be better. Jack DeRio, dial up some blitzes. Ron Rivera managed the game smoothly, and we can come out here with a dub. You know what I'm saying? They don't really fear me besides their offense, and their offense took a big hit with Dak Prescott um, not being there. So I feel more comfortable than I would have if Dak Prescott was in this game. Now, I'm not going to predict the score of the game because I feel like every time I do that, we lose. So I'm going to leave that up to you guys down below in the comment section. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, and to the Washington football team. It's me, Boy One Gotti. Dallas week, baby. I cannot wait for the game Sunday. Hey, it's do or die. You know, we win, we stay in, basically. Essentially, we win, we stay in. Not mathematically, but essentially, we win, we stay in, we lose, we start looking for the draft. Hail to the Washington football team. Like, comment, subscribe. It's me, Boy One Gotti. I'm out. Peace.